Hello everyone, and welcome to part two of All About Propellers. Now, originally what I was doing All About Propellers, I was going to do this one long video, then it just started getting really long, so that's why I decided to split it up into two. So in this video, we're going to be dedicated to what propeller settings you should be using. Now, keep in mind, I'm going to say this with a very, very, very gentle warning, is the fact that what we do in the flight simulator might not match the needs of the particular airplane that you're flying in the real world. And obviously, we're dealing with the flight sim, we're not dealing with it, so things are going to be a little different. So first things first, uh, when we're flying an aircraft, I'm actually going to give it a couple RPM here because I'm noticing that I'm actually pulling power out of the battery right now. <laughs> Just a problem. So what we're going to take a look at today is basically where we get our propeller settings from and when you should use it. The aircraft I'm going to be using for demonstrating this today is going to be our lovely little Mooney 20. Uh, the reason I'm using the Mooney 20 is because it's, it's something I'm familiar with in the real world. It's also something that's you know, relatively straightforward. So first of all, remember from last time that we're dealing with a constant speed propeller. So we've got one control for throttle, we have one control for propeller, and we have one control for mixture. Now keep in mind in normal, almost every single takeoff you're ever going to do, your propeller control is going to be pushed all the way forward. That's just a general rule of thumb. There's probably a couple aircraft out there in the universe that don't do this. I'm just not sure why that would be a situation, but again, it could be anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and execute a normal takeoff, and I'll kind of walk you through what I do in the real world and kind of how it translates to the simulator. So during takeoff, again, we treat everything normally, and we're going to go ahead and smoothly apply full throttle. And one thing that I like to do when you're dealing with a constant speed propeller in the real world is you got to give it enough time for it to actually get up to its maximum speed. And now, uh, one of the things you want to avoid, uh, especially with passengers, is when you stomp on the gas in a real world plane that has a constant speed propeller, you're going to get uh, into the back of the seat suddenly uh, when you're going because you're going to be producing that little bit of surge when the propeller actually bites the air just right, when it's kind of hunting those last couple RPMs. It's a very distinct phenomenon. It's one of those things that you know you're dealing with a constant speed when that occurs. So I'm gonna go ahead and get myself up in the air and I'll go cool cruising. Now, one of the most important things I was taught, I think this is very valuable for anybody operating any aircraft, is things break when you touch them. I know that's like, sounds obvious. I'm like, what's your point? My point here is don't go reaching for propeller controls. Don't go reaching for RPM controls. Don't touch anything until you've got enough altitude underneath you so that you can safely do something in an emergency. Now, this aircraft, uh, based on the POH, we're looking at a uh, high performance climb of about 105. Uh, if we're looking for a more relaxed climb, we're looking at about 120 knots. Now, the interesting thing with this aircraft is in the book, it describes the climb as being at maximum RPM and maximum throttle. Different aircraft manufacturers are going to have different rules as far as the way that that's going to go. Now, for example, uh, when I fly a Cessna 182, it actually has a cruise climb power setting where you can opt either operate at a maximum performance climb uh, like we have right now, or you can actually reduce the power a little bit in order to improve cooling and everything like that. The way we would do that is we'd simply come over here and you always want to make any manifold pressure changes before you make RPM changes. So in this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and make my manifold pressure change first. I'm going to go ahead and reduce this to 25 inches. There we are. And then we're going to go ahead and reduce my RPM just a teeny tiny bit. Notice now, uh, once we're in the air, it don't need so much. So I'm going to come down to 2,400 RPM. Fortunately, in flight sim, it's just a little bit touchier. It's a little easier to control the RPM. There we go. It's about as close as I'm going to get it. Perfect. So now I'm at a manifold pressure of 25, and I'm at an RPM of 2,400. So what I've done is I've reduced the maximum power, and therefore the noise, as well as the amount of heat that I'm producing, as well as you know fuel. You can see I've knocked five gallons per hour off, and I've only impacted my climb capabilities moderately. Now we're just going to continue our climb here and let's say we want to transition to a cruise climb. Now in this particular aircraft a cruise climb is going to be 120 knots. So what I do is I just let the nose come down and we build up that 120 knots. But remember because I've reduced both my RPM as well as my manifold pressure our cruise climb here is going to be a very 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 gentle climb on account of the fact that we just don't have a lot of excess power available. You can actually see I'm getting about 600 feet per minute which is, that's pretty good. I'm actually doing really well. I'm kind of surprised about that. I don't think it would climb this quickly. Again, it's a pretty cold day today, so maybe that has something to do with it. So the next thing everybody gets confused as what to do when they get to a climb. So let's get ourselves, a cruise rather, let's get ourselves into a cruise. In order to figure out what we're going to do for a cruise, we're going to have to take a look at the POH for the actual aircraft itself. Now, the POH is usually going to give us some kind of power table that's going to enable us to predict what particular combination of both manifold pressure as well as RPM that's going to enable us to do what we needed to do. So take a look real quickly here. You can see I'm sitting here at 5,500 feet, and I've also got 24 and 25. I just left that very, very 
gentle climb power in in order to kind of demonstrate exactly how this is going to change. So let's take a look here. Let's say we want to do 65% power. We have three RPMs to choose from. We have 2300, 2400, and 2500. Uh, generally, the lower the RPM, the you know, kind of less mechanical friction you're going to be creating. It's also a little bit quieter, but you run the risk, of course, you know, higher oil pressures, things like that. So let's go ahead and see. We're about 6,000 feet. If I just kind of follow it right across, here's my RPM setting. Here's my manifold pressure setting. So let's say we want to do 2,400. And we'll go down to 2,300 RPM here. So we got 21.2 manifold pressure and 2,300 RPM. That's all there is to it as far as making that calculation. So we're going to do the exact same thing we did before. We're going to reduce our manifold pressure first. I got to set something manifold. Manifold. It's a manifold pressure. All right, reduce it a little bit. That's going to be about 21.7 right there. It looks pretty good. Actually, we can probably come down a teeny tiny bit more. Perfect. And now we're going to reduce our RPM down to 2,300. Again, in flight sim, you tap the control and the thing goes brrrr. <laughs> in the real world, at least in the plane that I fly, this whole thing rotates so you can actually crank it by hand in order to reduce it. So now our RPM setting is 2,300 and our manifold pressure is now is set to 22 inches. Now, if we go back to taking a peek at our little chart here, we can see that when we put those two concepts together. Oh, 21.2. My bad. I should have said that correctly. I did 21.7. And 21.2 is right there. Perfect. We can see now that I'm producing 65% of my power. And theoretically, if I'm at best uh, fuel power setting for my mixture, I'm at 13.9 gallons per hour. We're actually kind of poke over here. You'll see that indeed I'm extremely close to 13.9 gallons per hour. As a matter of fact, let me lean the mixture just a teeny tiny bit. Of course, when I lean the mixture, I was going to increase power because of the way that I did it. Hey, nobody said that uh, setting up an airplane was going to be easy. There it is. Just like that. So I'm actually going to have to increase my manifold pressure. Actually, I had it just right. Never mind. I was perfect. Don't touch it. <laughs> so now I'm at about 13.9 gallons per hour. Whoop, too much. And I'm doing 2300 RPM, and I'm about 21.2 manifold pressure. So at this particular point, when we go back to our handy dandy cruise chart real quick, we can see that we're producing our 65% power. Now, the interesting thing is you're going to say, okay, that's that's great. I'm glad that you showed me how to find those settings. Um, what does that translate to as far as speed and power and all that other stuff? Well, it gets involved. Let's see here. 6,000 feet to 5,500. It's about 2,000. Screwed over. 65% power. Straight down from 65. Should be about 162 knots. Which, you know, take a look over my airspeed indicator, and I'm definitely not making 162 knots. But you have to remember, this is true airspeed. This is not indicated. I'm sorry, this is indicated airspeed, not true airspeed. The actual airspeed that we're making right now, um, we could basically do the math and do the division on. But you can see from my ground speed is starting to pick up a little bit as we're starting to get ourselves a little bit quicker. Because, again, now that the aircraft is uh, kind of rumbling along here. So you can already see there's quite a bit in setting. Um, now, one of the nice things about these is uh, in the old days, they used to always teach you that uh, whenever you're changing power, you, know, you always do your throttle to reduce, and then you always kind of do it in reverse to increase. But the reality is, if I were to sit here and stomp on the throttle at full power right now, um, nothing really bad would happen. These are very modern engines. They're very, very capable. As a matter of fact, they have a green arc for a reason. And pretty much as long as you keep anything in the green arc, you're not going to be running afoul of doing any damage to the aircraft at any particular point. They actually did a really nice job modeling this. That's very accurate. I don't think we're going to quite make our 160 here. But then again, that was an estimate. That was not me getting out the ruler and actually measuring it correctly. So now we need to think backwards now, not forward. So we've done our cruise. We've got everything set up. What happens when it comes time to actually descend with the airplane? Well, this is where things get a little bit interesting. And that's one of those things when I was first getting my complex cert, I had to kind of learn, relearn is another way to think about it. So let's begin our descent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, shut off our altitude hold here. One, two, three, four, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's probably going to be not enough. <laughs> yeah, it's not terrible, not terrible. So we start our descent. Now, here's a cool thing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and reduce my manifold pressure just a teeny tiny bit here and reduce it to about 20. Generally in a Mooney, uh, you're going to be keeping an eye on your cylinder head temperatures. Like, oh my God, that's really high. I do not know why that is so high. I'm pretty confident I opened everything here. Oh, that, that's that's nerve-wracking. That shouldn't be over 400 degrees. That, that, that's naughty. Even though it looks like it's in the green, that's not in the green. So what I will do is I go ahead and enrich my... Woo! That's not the enrichment mixture control. This is the enrichment mixture control. There we go. That should help take that temperature down. So when we descend now, we've got some good news. This propeller blade hanging off the front of us right now is twisted pretty aggressively in the course position. If we were to increase RPM, we would actually be making the propeller blade 
splatter into the air, which would actually cause it to create more drag, which in turn would make it easier to control our speed. So I'm just gonna smoothly, oh my gosh, what the heck? It doesn't do that in the real world. Smoothly increase my propeller RPM. So what's gonna happen is we now have more power available, but I haven't made a change here. And what's gonna happen is this giant propeller blade is now gonna act like a speed brake because it is now basically flat to the air. Now, if I were to do something really reckless, like I'll pull my throttle to zero, which I'd never recommend, by the way, uh, when you do that, your poor little engine here is basically gonna cool it. Okay, what the heck? This should be moving. I don't know why it's not moving. I'm not gonna worry about it too, too much, but that should be dropping like crazy. I almost wonder if I broke it. <laughs> but now that we have done that, the aircraft is going to rapidly decelerate because this propeller blade basically is blocking the air as it's coming in. That really, really, really helps with the descent. Like I said, we'd never drop it this low because that could be incredibly dangerous to the particular aircraft because you're basically shock cooling it. I'm looking at my external instruments right now and it says this is actually 200 degrees. So like I said, there's something funky with this actual gauge here. I'm not sure if they're doing Fahrenheit or Celsius or what's going on here. I'm not gonna stress about it too, too much. So the last thing we need to take a look at is what happens when we get to our destination and we're ready to do a landing. Here's where things get a little interesting. Now, what'll happen is uh, one of the standard items you're gonna wanna do during an approach to a landing is you're always gonna wanna go ahead and make sure that your propeller RPM pitch is all the way forward. The reason you do this is because if you have to do a go around, your propeller settings are already ready to go. Now, remember, whenever you're making propeller setting changes, in this case, if we're going to be increasing RPM, we always want to increase the RPM first with the propeller control and then increase our manifold pressure if that's exactly what we're trying to achieve here. Now, well, the reason, like I said, is we're gonna to have full RPM during landing is it's also going to help us slow the aircraft down. Now keep in mind, there's two concepts in the propeller we're not gonna be talking about, and that's going to be the feathering, which gives you the ability to twist the blades so that they go basically um, 90 degrees to the airflow, which is great if you need to uh, cause a propeller to windmill. We're also not gonna be talking about reversing the pitch of the blades. Now reversing actually gives you the ability to go ahead and set it so that the propeller blades twist the other way to help you slow down. Now notice I'm pulling my throttle back here and we have a significant decrease in RPM, even though my propeller control is all the way forward. Uh, one of the things I always recommend people do is uh, when they're setting themselves up for a landing pattern in the real world, is I always say, make sure you've slowed down enough so that when I push this handle forward, there's no surge of RPM. Uh, the reason you want to do that is it scares the crap out of your passengers. <laughs> That's the best way to describe it. So um, like I said, I always have kind of a low power settings. Then I push this forward before landing. It's just kind of one of those little uh, nice things to kind of do here. Now I'm going to show you something kind of cool. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my RPM and I'm going to intentionally reduce it. I'm going to pull it about that far back. That's a substantial reduction in uh, revolutions there. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, pretend to land the plane. And we're going to go ahead and cause some shenanigans and goings on, as they say. Drop those flaps, nose up. And we're going to come in for a nice little landing here. Oh man, using runway 20 today. Ooh, scandalous. I, 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 I don't like runway 20. It's different. <laughs> now, the reason I actually like runway 20 is because I always park in the north. So when you use runway 20, look at it. It's literally a straight line to get under the runway. It's, it's great. And also that guy who drives the fuel truck, nice guy. Nice guy. All right, let's go ahead and line ourselves up. Making this intentionally bad. I'm doing a pretty good job at making it intentionally bad here. All right, I'm looking down at my airspeed. I want to be doing about 80. Oh no, I'm doing 90 and I'm in a Mooney. I guess I should go around. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the throttle all the way forward. I'm go ahead and pop the flaps up, slam up the gear. Now notice, just like I was saying, our engine is now producing a whopping 1800 RPM at maximum power, but the aircraft is actually still producing enough thrust to enable me to continue climbing. Now to give you an idea of how dramatic of an effect this can have, I'm gonna sit here right at about 90, 95 knots. I'm gonna slam the propeller control forward. You're gonna get the surge. It pushes you back in your seats and watch us accelerate. There's an extra 10 knots right there. So as you can see, there's uh, quite a bit to the propeller control on an aircraft. You know, obviously, if you're dealing with fixed pitch, uh, things are much, much simpler for you. If you're dealing with a constant speed, there's quite a bit extra things you need to worry about. If you're dealing with an aircraft, of course, that has multiple engines, you have to do it for each engine. But as you can see, it really wasn't that scary when you're doing it. And like I said, this is just because somebody was asking about it. I thought I put together a fairly detailed series explaining it. Um, I 
you know, the aircraft that I fly is uh, typically a Cessna 182. Uh, we have a constant speed prop. Uh, the big thing that I do that's a little outside of the POH is I like to set my power to 2500 RPM during climb just to kind of take it down a little bit. Uh, you can obviously do a full power 2600 RPM climb with it, but I never feel the need to unless, you know, I've just taken off. And of course, like I said many, many times before, you kind of kind of play with the systems and you have to know the individual airplanes, especially when you're dealing with turboprops. Some of those numbers are going to be really, really different. So it's going to make it a little bit more challenging as far as knowing exactly what setting to use, which is why you have to do your research if you're looking to do things realistically. But other than that, uh, like I said, hopefully this has been informative. Enjoy.